been so blessed with such an amazing career, and, and, you know, from Crazy Rich Asians, from Memoirs of a Geisha, to everything everywhere all at once. And when you finally get a script where a character that was so ordinary and how we are able to make her extraordinary, I was very, very touched. I did have someone say, are you sure about this? Because this is very different. That's the point. It is different. And I'm always saying I want to be able to do more and be challenged. And this one challenged me. I don't think we could have done it with anybody else. There is no everything everywhere without Michelle Yeoh. So the scene that we're watching is the moment when Evelyn has hit her rock bottom. She thinks everything I do is wrong. Evelyn being a mother, wife, immigrant, it's a life that's very overwhelming. She cares so much about everything, but she can't actually give the attention that any of these relationships need. Hey, Evelyn! Bagel! And right when she is about to lose faith, her husband comes in. You can still turn around and avoid all this. Please. Be kind. It's too late to win. Don't say that. This is the moment, I think, in the script, it said something about Michelle sees her husband for the first time for everything that he is. It's, it's a moment where she stops and looks at her husband after kind of ignoring him for, you know, about an hour of the movie. Did you see that? <laughs> that was what she suddenly reflected on in, I think, in the depths of her heart as she watched inside her, her own head the images of them getting together, buying the new laundromat, starting a new life, having a kid. And those were precious, precious moments that we tend to forget. We set up this lighting rig and aimed it at Michelle and just told her, you know, sorry, you're not gonna be able to act opposite key, but uh, imagine you're looking at your husband and finally seeing him. You know, it's a very vague bit of direction. And she just gave this performance. Like, I don't know if we did two takes. And we were like tearing up at the monitor, such a testament to her insane ability as an actress. She's just looking into a camera lens and telling, communicating this story with her eyes and those little giggles and smiles as she just starts to well up. And I remember like both of us at the monitor being like, oh, this scene's gonna work. And then we turned it around and we pointed it at Key and he did the same thing. In this moment, Wayman becomes the key to how Evelyn figures out what really matters. When we were in downtown LA in an alley uh, shooting that movie star universe, uh, it was quite surreal to me because I got the pleasure of working for Wong Kar Wai behind the camera. And here we are, dedicating an entire universe. So for me, because I haven't done acting for, for so long, putting on that suit, having my hair slicked back, and stepping in front of the camera, it was emotional to me. Working very closely with Key, he fitted the role. It's so brilliant. And we need fabulous actors like this. There are the homages to Wong Kar Wai and The Mood for Love, but also references Michelle Yeoh, the actress. For me, I wanted to have her be more Michelle than Evelyn in that scene. I asked Michelle, who do you like to wear on the red carpet? She had um, suggested some brands that she liked, and one of them was Illy Saab. And um, they had graciously sent some dresses for us to borrow. The one that we see is the one that we thought worked the best for the scene. That beautiful line written by the Daniels in another life. And you know, I would have just loved doing taxes and laundry with you. It was very memorable. This scene is extremely pivotal to the movie. This line of dialogue that Wayman delivers to her was 
so important to us for so many drafts for years we like built the movie knowing that like at this point he's gonna say this line to her I feel like this scene is something that sets up the rest of the film, the final climax, which is basically her taking this lesson and trying her best to give the people around her the love and attention that she had been withholding for most of her life. There are over 100 cues of music in this movie, which is a lot, a lot, a lot of music for, for a film. The laundry and taxes cue, which continues through that scene and gets bigger and bigger, that was one of the most tricky scenes to score because it was so significant a moment emotionally that just called for a kind of effusive, like a giving in to the melancholy and the, and the sweetness. Stephanie Hsu comes from comedy and Broadway and she loves improv and so she was perfect for the role of Jobu. Playing Jobu and Joy simultaneously was one of the most interesting and complex characters I've ever played, and also most fun, because you really get to stretch your range so wide, because you start as this very understated daughter, and you know, like as an actor or a dramaturg or director, you know that that daughter who is so invisible is about to become an ultra nihilist chaos creator villain and it's really quite vulnerable i feel like to be a woman and as grotesque and just kind of let it all hang out the way that the daniels wanted jobu to be i do think it spoke to the themes of the film of a daughter who terrifies her mother <laughs> mrs wang are you with us so this is the first time we meet Jamie Lee Curtis's character, Deirdre. Um, she is the auditor assigned to the Wong family. I, need I remind you that there's already a lien on your property. Repossession is well within our rights. I know. I am paying attention. Right before this moment, Evelyn, Michelle's character, has just discovered that she is connected to another version of herself hiding in the closet. And so she is completely distracted. She has no idea what's going on. And the genre line is starting to blur. With nothing but a stack of receipts, I can trace the ups and downs of your lives. And it does not look good. It does not look good. But I... uh, sorry. My wife confuses her hobbies for businesses. An honest mistake. At that moment, she was like, you're supposed to be on my side, and she was hurt. And I think it's all these little moments that when every time you don't, he, you feel that he's not with her, it's against her. And that, you know, as a couple, that's the worst thing that you can do because it just like adds. Next time, it adds a little bit more. The end of it, when she suddenly goes to another universe, she's like, ah, it was so beautiful there, you know? Why am I coming back to this? Well, with all of these um, honest mistakes, I mean, even if we don't charge you with fraud, we'll most certainly have to fine you for gross negligence. You are always trying to confuse us with these big words. I know Deirdre's. I think Deirdre represents forgotten people who are doing jobs that are awful, that have lost their humanity in their jobs. Jamie showed up early and just redecorated her own cubicle. She was like, no, my cats would go here. And, and she figured out where the file folders would go. Well, and she, she spent quite a she while. She a little baggie filled with uh, Deirdre pops. And oh, yeah, she had her own things. She, she had her perfume picked out. And she was like, Deirdre, where's this perfume? <laughs> Truth of the matter is, that was day one and two of the whole movie. And I arrived fully formed. I'm not someone who is going to discover it in the process of the shooting. This is a character that could have been like a smaller role. And because of her presence, she transformed it into something that, you know, mm -hmm. is it, we're still talking about now. I found that this movie is very interesting how every person takes something quite different from it. And I think that's why it's generated so much love.
you know, it's a movie about distractions, and a, we live in a world where we're constantly distracted by so many things, and one of the only things we have to give each other is our attention. The entire reason why we wrote this film was because we were grappling with the question of how do we exist in the chaos and the noise of modern life? You know, like, how do you uh, make sense of any of it? There's zero sense that they don't know exactly what the shot is, exactly what they need. And they are a beautiful combo. We wanted to create a movie that would stand up against all the big blockbusters and theaters, but then also be a sort of an argument for saying that the, the small, intimate moments in our lives are just as big as those moments and not get washed away. This movie has a wonderful theme. It's about kindness. It's about empathy. It's about acceptance. And it came out just the right time. The heartbeat of this film is so big that if it does catch you, it feels really good to feel. It is so grounded by a real emotion that is love that is compassion, that's kindness. It's okay. We will be there for each other.